Who are the real Pharisees? Why don't we turn to the Bible and find out? Get a King James Bible, like this one, open it up, and read what the Scriptures have to say. Instead of relying on feelings and emotions and things like that, and experiences, let's see what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 15, verse 1. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also tra transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Pharisees are people that hold their own man-made traditions above the word of God. That's what the Bible is saying here. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ says. Not my opinions, what Jesus says. Then you go down through verses 4 and 6 here. We'll read those, 4 through 6. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father and mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God by of the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. You have your own feelings, your own traditions, and you overthrow scripture, and then people try to show you scriptures, and you call people like me a Pharisee. Because you can't handle the scriptures. Verse 7 Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. They'll do all kinds of things that appear nowhere in Scripture. And then they try to attack people like me, preachers like me. They come out and say, Hey, you're doing things that don't appear in Scripture. You contradict the Scriptures. And they say, Oh, you're a Pharisee. No, you're the Pharisee that overthrows the Scriptures by your traditions that you've made up on your own. Let me show you a couple of these. All right? You say, well, you need to be very careful because you calling men like Torben Sundergaard and, and Chris LaSalla and all these, you're calling them, you know, bad names and you're, you're being mean to them. You better be real careful. See, that's another thing that you little punks try to do. You threaten people like me. You threaten a Bible-believing preacher that judges according to Scripture. You threaten me and try to say I'm committing the unpardonable sin because I'm speaking against holy men of God. Well, let me tell you something, princess. I'm a holy man of God. God does things through this ministry. So don't try to say, oh, you're just a nothing and a nobody and whatever else. I have the fruit to prove that the Lord is behind this ministry. Not a bunch of devil-possessed charismaniacs out there lying about the Scriptures and faking gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let's talk about this thing of the, the unpardonable sin. And most of you don't have the guts to get through this because you're a bunch of stinking Pharisees that can't handle the Scriptures. All you're doing right now is you're sucking your thumb you know, in between typing nasty comments to me because you can't handle the truth. You are not logical. You're emotional. Deal with it. Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 and 32. Let's see about this unpardonable sin. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. That's key there. But let's go back here just for a minute. Jesus Christ is saying, you can speak against me, against the Son of Man, but don't speak against the Spirit that's within me, the Holy Ghost. Don't say, I have a devil spirit in me. See, that's what's going on there. So me kicking these fake healers out there, Torben Sundergaard, Chris LaSalle, any of the other ones, any little liars that they are, I'm not in danger of committing the unpardonable sin for kicking a man. I would only be in danger for saying that the spirit that's in them is a false spirit if they were in reality saved, and they're not. They're most certainly not. Okay? That's what's going on here. But look at the verse. It shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. What does that mean? Well, because you're lost and a charismatic nut, you don't understand such things. 
what's going on there is Jesus is saying, I'm here on the earth as God manifest in the flesh. There was no time when Jesus was not speaking according to the Holy Spirit. There was no time off, so to speak. He was the Godhead fully manifest right there. Okay? 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. In your King James Bible talk about it. these three are one. He was God. And it's ironic. A sister brought this whole thing out recently here. Chris LaSala doesn't even believe that. Jesus Christ is not God according to this Satanist. This little lying Luciferian. What's going on there? Jesus is saying, if you speak against the Holy Ghost within me, you can speak against the Lord Jesus. You can say things against him because you're ignorant and, and foolish and things. That's why I said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They had no idea what they were doing. But if you speak against the spirit that's in him, it won't be forgiven you in this world when Jesus was present on the earth the first time, nor, neither in the world to come, the millennial kingdom, when he comes back. You can't commit the unpardonable sin unless Jesus Christ is physically on the earth. According to the words of Scripture, according to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, you can't handle that if you're charismatic. Why? Because you, being a lying cult member, have to be able to have some kind of power over people that you can say, you better be careful. You're very close to committing the unpardonable sin. You don't have any scripture to prove that and you, well, you don't know it because you're ignorant. Okay, you're lost. I've gotten that, I got that thing so many times because I prove that witches can speak in tongues and they say, you better be careful. I'm not going to be careful about anything. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. When they actually were speaking in tongues, they were mocked, and Peter never once threatened anybody with committing the unpardonable sin. You people have a system that's completely foreign to Scripture, just like the Pharisees. You understand? No Bible-believing Christian that quotes Scripture, none of us, is a Pharisee unless we're adding things to the Scriptures that don't appear in here that, in fact, overthrow the Scriptures, like every charismatic does. But let's go on to the next Scripture. Let's go to the signs. Mark chapter 16. Well, I know that Torpin is, is a man of God, and I know that Chris Lasala, and I know that you know all these other you know wing nuts, I know that they're men of God because they can do the signs. They can go speak in tongues, and I've seen them heal people, and I've seen all these other things. Okay, let's check this out. Mark chapter 16, verse 14. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. No problem. But here's where it gets interesting. Verse 17, And these signs, remember that, shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. We'll see that later. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Okay. Torben Sundergaard, Chris LaSala, any of you other little effeminate sissies out there, drink some poison on camera, go to a, in an auto parts store, get a bottle of sulfuric acid, and drink it on camera. It doesn't say that... Well, if they felt like drink, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Let's see it. Let's see it. Well, we, we shouldn't tempt the Lord. Oh, come on, princess. Come on. Come on. Where do you see that? Oh, well, you know, only drink it, you know, in certain occasions if somebody's trying to poison you. And you should only do it then and, and things because otherwise it's tempting the Lord. That's not in the text. If they drink anything any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Come on, faker. Try it. I want to see it. Go to the hardware store, get some Drano. Chug, chug, chug. Show it to me. We're not even talking about going down to the hospital and healing people. Laying hands on the sick and then, boom, instantly recovering. We're not even talking about that. We won't even get into the thing of Jesus Christ healing maimed people, making them be whole. We won't even get into that. Just a simple little thing there in Mark chapter 16, which all you fakers claim to follow. Drink some deadly poison, and it won't hurt you. Show it to me. 
Okay. Luke chapter 3. Here's another one that I need to cover. This is another one that these fakers will, will do. They'll say, you know, we've been baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Uh, that's not possible. You can't be saved and lost. Luke chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptized you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Two separate baptisms, not the same. How do you know? This is going to be very difficult for you if you're charismatic. Keep reading. I know you like one verse here and there. You don't like context. But let's keep reading. Verse 17. Oh, so sarcastic. Oh, I know. Isn't it awful? Verse 17, whose fan is in his hand, and he will throughly purge his floor, and he will gather the wheat into his garner, the Holy Ghost, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable, separating the wheat and the chaff, saved and lost. Saved people, baptized with the Holy Ghost. Lost people, baptism of fire, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Mark chapter 9. Hell. So you fakers out there that say, I was baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost came on down. <laughs> you know, well, if you're baptized in fire, that means you're going to hell. You say, well, no, no, uh, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 is, is, you know, where the fire comes down. Let's check about that. Acts chapter 2. What's dumber than a dumb Catholic? A smart charismatic. Some of you aren't going to get that either. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothed in tongues like as of fire. It does not say clothed in tongues of fire or as of fire, like as of fire. They weren't clothed in tongues of fire. Let's see about these tongues. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. What are tongues? Languages. You say, oh no, they're unknown tongues. Okay, let's, let's see about the unknown tongues here. Verse 7, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cap and Cappadocia in Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya around about Cyrene and the strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Where are the unknown tongues? There aren't any. There are no unknown tongues in the entire book of Acts. Not one time do you see unknown tongues. But you see, the lying charismatic says, well, 1 Corinthians 12 through 14 says unknown tongues. Yeah, but you see, there's interpreters with those unknown tongues. Where are the interpreters? They aren't there. Where are the unknown tongues? They aren't there. Why? Because you're dealing with two different things. You see, 1 Corinthians 12 through 14 is dealing with Christians that have a gift to learn other languages. Tongues. Understand? And other Christians have the ability to interpret those, to be a translator. You see? I know that's hard for some people. Acts chapter 2, you're dealing with known languages, known tongues. They're not the same thing as what's going on over in 1 Corinthians 12 through 14. Difficult, isn't it? You know, and but you get these people 
and they're so worried about blaspheming the Holy Ghost and everything, and they go, sha la 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 you know, want to buy a Honda, you know, and all this other stuff, you know? And you go, oh, oh, you know? I mean, I, I start going, making up, you know, some dumb things and say, jalapeno, you know, takabaya, Honda, Waina, Saga, Suzuki, Harley Davidson, you know, stuff. And people go, oh, you've blasphemed the Holy Ghost. No, actually, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost when you make up your little silly demonic language. You see? I'm not against people learning other languages, learning other tongues. That's fine. That is a gift of the Holy Spirit. But when you get these people that, you know, just go work at an auctioneer, you know. But check this out. Look at verse 13 in Acts chapter 2. Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. Uh-oh. The real gift of speaking in tongues is being performed and people are there mocking it. Let's see how Peter warns them, you better be careful. You've, you're, you're close to committing the unpardonable sin. Watch this. Verse 14, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Wait a second. Then Paul go, or Peter, excuse me, Peter goes into preaching the gospel to them, and they get saved. Where was the warning, the admonition about them blaspheming the Holy Ghost? It's not there. So don't you lying fakers out there come out and try to threaten me and say, you better be careful. You better be careful. You know, I get this thing all the time from these charismatic nuts, and they'll go, you're, com you're, you're very close to committing the unpardonable sin. You, better, you might have already committed it, you know. And then they get the, through this just railing on me and just, you know, attacking me, you know, tearing down my character, saying I'm the devil and I've, I've been called, you know, all kinds of the angel of light and the accuser of the brethren and all this other stuff. Fun little titles that these lost people try to put on me. Kind of like Catholics, you know, pronouncing anathemas against you. Yeah, kind of funny. But uh, they'll do this and at the end they go, God bless. <laughs> it's like, huh? You know, I, I'm committing the unpardonable sin, but God bless, you know. <laughs> Crazy, crazy people, very crazy. But you see, if you're a charismatic nut, you stop at Acts chapter 2. You don't realize that it goes on and on and on and on here in the book of Acts. You know, if you're a charismatic, I guess you just take the, you know, Acts chapter 2 and, and chapter 3, the whole way back to Revelation 22, and you just go whoosh, and rip it out of your Bible and throw it away. After all, your traditions usurp Scripture. So why be bothered by this old Bible, this old book? that tells you what to do. Because you can fill in, instead of Scripture, just fill in your own experiences, your own feelings. You see. It's insanity. Actually, if you read the book of Acts, you would see, and you get this Torben Sundergaard, and he's, you know, we do things just like in the book of Acts. It's just like in the book of Acts. And the guy's casting out demons, he says. Not even a King James word, demon. It's devils. But, uh, Another issue. Casting out demons, according to him, after baptizing people. Not one verse of Scripture to prove that. Nobody in the entire New Testament casts a devil out of anybody after baptizing them. Not one person. What's going on? He's a Pharisee, and he's overthrowing Scripture with his own traditions. Oh, well, I was at his kickstart, and I saw it happen with my own eyes. Well, then... I must be wrong, because all I have is the Scriptures. But you see, if you would actually read through the book of Acts, not only would you see that these men are frauds, they're not going to drink any deadly thing, okay? They're not about to do that. They're not going to pick up deadly serpents, and, you know, Paul was bitten by them, and it didn't kill him. I'm not talking about some little snake that you can be bit, and you can, you know, be healed from it. Or I'm talking something really, really, really deadly. One of these two-step snakes, or whatever, you hear these things you know, some kind of a, you know, viper or something like that that bites you and you're dead in a matter of minutes. You know, pick up something like that. That's what Paul did. You're an apostle, aren't you? You know, of course not. But if you read through the book of Acts, you would realize that there are multiple days of Pentecost. Only the first one do you have the Holy Spirit coming down. After that, you have believers getting the Holy Spirit when they get saved. 
You see, that's another one of the satanic heresies that these false prophets will do. Not only are they claiming to cast out devils, they couldn't cast a devil out of a sick cat. I mean, they're claiming to cast out devils. They're not. They're actually imparting them. But they're also saying that they're healing people. They're not. They're doing the little fake leg tricks and stuff like this and, and hypnotizing people. They use hypnosis, and, and they do. They all, oh, I've never been taught hypnosis. Well, then the devils, apparently, that are in you are having you do it automatically. You see? But what they're doing is they're doing these things. They're faking things. See? And they're trying to say that you get saved, and then we have to cast, you know, we baptize you, and then we have to, you know, get the devils out of you, and then later on the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you'll start to speak in tongues, and you'll, you know, like that. And then you're speaking in tongues. And some Bible believer comes along and says, hey, wait a second, this isn't the scripture. And they go, Pharisee, you've committed the unpardonable sin. <laughs> Crazy, nutty nonsense. All right? Read the book of Acts and then judge these guys' ministries. And by the way, every time in the book of Acts that tongues are spoken, the actual sign gift of tongues, Jews are always present. Did a whole study on it. You know, and I get that too. The guy in this video doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh, actually, yeah, I've uh, got a whole sermon on what tongues are. But let's see about this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. It says here, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Mark chapter 16. They went out and uh, preached the word with signs following. Who are the signs for? The Jews... Yeah. So, we can keep going on and on and on and on and on, but I realize that the uh, charismaniacs, um, most of them, are so filled with Satan and, and the devils and stuff like that, uh, they've given themselves over to spirits and they, you know, they put their hands up and uh, they actually want spirits to come in and take over them. And then they say, oh, the Holy Spirit's come upon me. And then they start doing things that appear nowhere in Scripture, you know. But uh, if, you're, if you've been fooled into this movement, I'm saying what I'm saying as a man that's calling out to you because you're headed for destruction. And you better turn, you better repent of that charismatic foolishness. You see, I don't know about this Torben Sundergaard guy. He's just traveling all over making a you know, mockery of, of Christians. I mean, there was some thing where he was in Ireland the one time and, and the atheists like stood against him and they're like, oh, see, this is what Christians are. They're nuts. Um, no, that's not what Christians are. That's what charismaniac fakers are. But uh, I know that this Chris LaSala guy, he's down in uh, some place, and he's like making this survivalist retreat or something like this, and this little city of refuge where you can come and you can have your devils cast out and we can, you know, do these other things and stuff like this. Um, kind of interesting because uh, Jim Jones actually uh, his had his little compound over there in Africa, and ended up uh, having all of his followers drink Kool-Aid. You know why? Because at one point in time, he took the Bible from the pulpit and he threw it out onto the floor and he said, did anything happen to me? No. You don't need that book. I have the video. I have the proof. I did a thing on Jim Jones years and years ago showing that uh, he was a member of a particular movement. Any guesses what that movement was? Charismatic, Pentecostal. He was a Pentecostal preacher. And once he removed the book from the people, he was able to get away with all kinds of devilment. You see, that's what Pharisees are. Pharisees come out and they say, uh, well, you know, maybe it's not specifically mentioned in there, but, uh, you know, we've seen, haven't you seen these American, amazing miracles and things? I mean, you've seen it with your own eyes. You've seen the people and you've seen the things and stuff like this. See? They make the word of God of none effect by their tradition. That's what's going on. And I'm getting real radical and real rabid because I've been dealing with these people and I've had them attack me so many times over the years. I mean, the, most, the, the greatest attacks I've gotten are from charismatics. I mean, the, the most, if you want to take the most attacks... And I've been attacked so many times that I'm blaspheming the Holy Ghost because I speak against a bunch of fakers. And uh, if you want the truth, 
you're not going to be offended by some of the stuff I said. You read Matthew chapter 23, you'll see the Lord Jesus Christ himself was quite um, militant and quite offensive to the Pharisees. You see, religious people will damn far more people than atheists or agnostics or whatever else. The thing that will damn more people than any secular movement, alcohol or fornication or whatever else, the thing that will damn more people out there is organized religion. And you see these charismatic fakers come out and they, they'll say, you know, there are no church buildings in the New Testament. That's good. That's true. Very true. I'm against church buildings. But then what they do is then they say, um, we can come together and we can do all these amazing things and you'll, you'll feel the mighty power of God. You'll feel these things and stuff like this. And they get you in and they start to deceive you. And they start to lie to you. And if you're smart enough to actually start reading the Bible, you go, wait a sec. I'm reading it. it. It doesn't say that. They'll say, I'm a man of God. You better be careful. You better be real careful what you say about me. They'll use fear to control you. Just like the Pharisees did back in Jesus' day. Yep, that's what they do. Pharisees are not Bible-believing Christians. Pharisees are charismatic healers. Along with a bunch of other groups, but charismatic healers come in there right near the top of some of the best Pharisees in our modern world. So you just thought to yourself that Pharisees were suit and tie and legalistic and all those other standards and stuff. That's there too. But a Pharisee can come to you in the, the hippest trends and whatever else. A Pharisee is anyone that holds their traditions above the Word of God. They hold up their traditions based on their feelings, their emotions. That's a Pharisee. And if you continue in that system, you're going to go to hell. I'm trying to warn you. You need to get away from that thing. 